an entitled Karen gets upset at a theme park when she has a Make-A-Wish kid cut in line in front of her, going so far as to belittle this kid for having cancer, while also wishing that her kid had cancer just so they could cut line as well. And I've honestly never been more angry at anybody in my life. Here's what happened. Over my many, many years as a photographer for a major theme park, I've been asked repeatedly if I've ever lost my cool with a guest, and when I think about it, the story I'm going to tell you is that very situation. For those of you who don't know, there's a wonderful organization called Make-A-Wish in the United States, which grants wishes to severely terminally ill kids. One popular wish is to come to our park, and we pull out all the stops for them. And I have many fond memories of these kids and their families. There's an etiquette in place for certain character locations, which most Wish families are aware of. The kid waits at the exit while someone in your party alerts the character attendant so they can tell the character and alert the rest of the line so the kid can meet the character. The family also wears a special pin and lanyard so everybody knows exactly what's going on. Now most guests are great about this and even complimented us on making the Wishes vacation special. But there is a few bad apples in every barrel. One afternoon I was photographing a princess character and we had a family show up who for some reason wasn't aware that they needed to wait in line. Our attendant had closed the line and was waiting at the end of the line. So the mother came up to the family next meeting the princess and asked if they could go ahead as they are Make-A-Wish. Fortunately, that family was great and told them to go right ahead, even introducing the princess to the little girl. So we think that things are fine and I told the mother about the etiquette to make things easier. She thanked me at the end of the interaction and they went on their way. Two families later, our Karen of the story asked me what the deal was in regards to the kid that we let go ahead of the previous family. Now, I explained that they are a Make-A-Wish family, thinking that that's going to solve the issue altogether. But nope, of course it doesn't. This Karen then does something that honestly blew my mind. She said, loud enough for everybody to hear her, wow, I wish my daughter was dying of cancer so we could cut in line. And when this entitled Karen said that, I was honestly so shocked. What the Karen didn't know was that my uncle, who's my mom's brother-in-law, had just died from cancer, and his parents had just buried him. He was their only child. So I was ready to deck this woman. I mean, that's how angry I was in that moment. The princess had overheard, looked at the Karen with an angry expression, and said in a polite tone, but still staying in character, stating that she better be careful with what she's saying. The other parents in line were grumbling and making comments about how she was an unfit mother, and how they're going to tell the guest relations exactly what happened. By this point, I was on the verge of tears, remembering my uncle and just how much his death gutted his family. When we were finished with the set, the princess, who is a friend of mine, got me off stage, got me some water, and alerted her manager. And I wasn't able to go back out and shoot until her next set. Now, nothing ever came of it, but it honestly just reminded me of how much some people suck. Yeah, that's a crazy situation, and honestly, I can't imagine keeping my cool in that kind of scenario. Like, seriously, how can someone be so unkind and cruel, especially in the face of a kid who's dealing with cancer? The fact that she would say that to a child who is probably more brave than she will ever be, in my opinion, is like so disgusting and so uncalled for. Like, I'm kind of surprised they didn't kick her out of the line for making that kind of comment. Like, lady, if that was your daughter, I don't think you would be saying that. You would probably be thankful that you have one more day with your daughter instead of being like, wow, we get to cut lines now. Like, that is such an awful thing to say. And you know what? I don't blame you for getting so upset, especially when you've had somebody in your life pass away from this. It really is a hard thing to watch a loved one go through such a traumatic experience with no guarantee that you're going to see them tomorrow. So truly shame on that Karen for saying exactly what she did because she was truly out of line. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Three entitled nurses at a hospital try to kick me out of the family waiting room. And despite explaining exactly why I was there, they refused to take no for an answer. They demanded that I get my stuff and get out of the room. Here's what happened. So a few months ago, my dad was admitted to the hospital and later transferred to their rehab unit. I was coming to the hospital every day to check on him and make sure he was eating properly and if any of the nurses or doctors had questions or information that they needed and I could quickly answer it for them. I was also working, so I set up camp in the family room, which is open to all family members of patients. There was a small desk in the corner of the room and I set up my laptop there and worked. Then after my shift ended, 
I would go back to my dad's room and spend time with him until the visiting hours would end. The family room is usually empty during the daytime and I have my headphones on and I work quietly. If another family member does come in, I let them know they can turn the TV on and not worry about me as my headphones drown out the noise and I know that it is a shared room. Well, one day while working, three nurses walk in and see me. One of them says to me, what are you doing here? We want this room. So I respond to him by saying, sure, please use the big table or any other space you want. I'm a family member and I was told I can use this room. I then explain that I'm just using this small desk and they don't have to worry about me at all. Noises do not bother me. This nurse then says to me, no, I want you to leave. We want the whole room. So I say to her, no, this is a shared room. You can do whatever you need to here, but I'm not leaving. I'm more than happy to share. She then huffs and leaves and the other two look incredibly embarrassed. A few minutes later, another woman walks in and questions why I'm working out of there and that I should give up the room to the three nurses. I ask her, okay, well, where should I go? I was told this room is for family members and that I am free to work out of it. She looks annoyed and says, did you tell them you're a family member and not staff? I said to her, yep, I told them I was a family member. She then finally apologized and said that I have first rights to the room as a family member and they should have known better than ask me to leave. She went on to explain, they cannot kick you out. I'll go talk to them and tell them that they have to find another room. So I said thank you and I also said I'm still willing to share as I don't mind others in the room. The woman smiled and then left. And you know what? I never saw those three nurses again for the rest of the two weeks that I was there. Wow, I can't believe those three nurses acted like that. First of all, they knew that that was a family room. They knew for a fact that this room could be shared with just about anybody and they really should have connected the dots about why someone would be in there in the first place. I mean, seriously, that was incredibly rude and so uncalled for. And why would they not believe this guy when he's like, yeah, I've got family that are in the hospital right now. And it's not like this guy was bothering anybody or doing anything wrong. I imagine he was sitting in some corner with this small desk with his headphones and laptop, literally not bothering a single person. Like it really seems like this guy was out of the way and there's no reason for anyone to be like, okay, you got to get out. Like don't the nurses have some kind of like staff lounge or something like that they can go to? I mean, if they really needed a room, they could kick everybody out of there and not try to demand that people leave the family room. You know, the place people sit when their loved ones are sick. So yeah, that was super rude. The nurses were out of line. And thankfully, the person who came and talked to this guy knew exactly what to do. Because the fact that they tried to kick him out, even after knowing that he was a family member, in my opinion, is incredibly toxic. An entitled thief confesses to their crime in my checkout line after they come back in the same day that they robbed my store. Here's what happened. So I work in a store that has a lot of thefts. Calling security is never an option because they take 10 minutes to arrive, even when there was a fight at the registers that ended up requiring the police and multiple ambulances. Because of this, people get away with a lot of things. And at this point, there's a reoccurring customer who's stolen more than he's ever bought. Now, this isn't about that customer, but the other week, I was serving a customer who asked to take cash off of his debit card, which is not a big deal, by the way, but it failed so many times, he said to just cancel the order and just walked out while I canceled the cash out order. Well, that's when I realized that he also took out the entirety of his cart, which was about $50 of deli meat. I, of course, knew I was going to get written up and just mark it as a loss because at least we know exactly what he took. Well, a few hours later, he came through again and his order was now $400, full of a lot of premium silverware, cosmetics, and all this other stuff. Plus, he wanted a cash out on the same card as before. I said she and put his groceries on my other side so he wasn't in arm's reach of any of it before continuing, before setting up for the cash out. Now, instead of using his card, he immediately asked why I moved the bags and I told him that I was looking to clean the area while he finished his purchase. It was a lie, but I couldn't tell him I suspected he was a thief. Now, I didn't even mention the previous shop, but he immediately started yelling for me to give him his bags and that I was refusing to sell to him because he stole from a earlier, and I did not even mention that situation at all. It took a few minutes for the manager to arrive, taking over the man's shop. It turns out his card still didn't work, and with a huff, he just ended up leaving. So, with two write-ups for that day, one for a $50 loss, and the other for suspecting a thief, the only praise I got was from loss preventions, who really congratulated me for keeping an eye out. So, needless to say, that was definitely a roller coaster of a day. Yeah, that must have been really
really weird to see the same guy walk in and be like, wow, you're not going to sell me stuff because I robbed you earlier. Not only did this guy admit to stealing from your store, but your manager, knowing this information, did nothing about it. He didn't deny this guy's service and tell him to get lost. He didn't go to loss prevention to check the cameras or something like that. No, this guy's like, okay, you're going to get written up for suspecting an obvious thief. And also the thief confessed to their crimes earlier, by the way. Like, seriously, what are they doing? What are you getting written up for? I know if that was me, I would be losing my mind right now. I'd be like, are you kidding me right now? This guy literally said he stole from the store and that's his reasoning for why I'm supposedly not giving him service. Like, it's almost like the manager skipped over that detail and said, nope, you're in the wrong, which is literally just the most frustrating thing on planet Earth when it comes to customer service. So hopefully you're able to find a better job that actually values your time and effort, especially when it comes to calling out thieves in your store. Because if you have managers like that, in my opinion, this problem is not going to get any better. And I can definitely see you getting written up again in the future. Am I the jerk for suggesting we lock up the Christmas presents after my niece last year opened all the gifts and broke several toys that were going to other kids? Here's what happened. Every year, my siblings and I, alongside our families, spend Christmas with our parents. We stay at their house for a few days. Everyone opens gifts together. It's hectic, but a lot of fun. The kids enjoy having one big sleepover with their cousins. My mom likes having everyone home again. We all pitch in and it's honestly a win-win. Last year, my brother married a woman by the name of Sally and she has a seven-year-old daughter by the name of Mindy. Sally and Mindy are not their real names. This was their first Christmas with us and it seemed like they were having a fun time. On Christmas Eve, all the kids went to the finished basement to sleep. We told the kids not to open up gifts without us and to wake us up when they did. And this was repeated several times. Once the kids were asleep, we put all the gifts under the tree and eventually went to bed ourselves. Well, the next morning at around 6 o'clock in the morning, I wake up early and head downstairs. And that's when I find the living room is an absolute mess. Half of the gifts are unwrapped. Several of them have been ripped from their boxes. And there was Mindy playing with some of the toys. And most of the toys weren't even hers. She knows how to read and they were all labeled, so she knew what she was doing. Needless to say, I was in shock. I went and got my brother, Sally, alongside the rest of the adults, and Sally was super embarrassed, with my mom being very upset. The other kids were not up yet, so we tried to salvage what we could while Sally talked to Mindy. Not everything could be fixed, and she had broken a couple of the toys completely. The broken ones weren't even her own toys. Luckily, not everything was damaged, and even the boxes that were, the kids didn't really notice. But my nephew, who is my sister's son, had one of the biggest gifts destroyed and he was sad when everyone else got theirs while he was told we'd have to wait for a new one to come in. Well, Sally and my brother reimbursed everybody. Mindy didn't get to open gifts with everyone but joined the festivities later. She apologized but kept making excuses. She said she didn't want to wait and she wanted to see what everyone else got. Well, we're all preparing to go to my parents' house again this year. I put in the group chat that we should either lock the door to the living room this year or put a gate around the tree so no one can get to to it. I didn't even name names, just specifically said no one. Well, Sally and my brother got mad, accusing me of treating Mindy like a baby or an animal. I said I'm not, but this is a precaution so none of the kids are tempted. They said this isn't necessary, and I'm holding a mistake over Mindy's head. I said no, I'm not. I'm trying to make sure that we don't have a repeat incident. Now, because I know that this will be asked, Mindy doesn't have autism or ADHD, and even if she did, my daughter has ADHD, and both my sister's kids are on the spectrum and they absolutely knew better. I don't think Mindy was malicious. I mean, she was only six years old, but I do think precautions should be made. My parents agree with me and my brother is mad that I put this in their heads. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, you are definitely not the jerk in this situation. Mindy is an absolute nightmare of a child and she had no business being around those presents. And I think it's absolutely appropriate to say, okay, let's lock these gifts up before Mindy comes down and unwraps them all, or even breaks some of the toys. Can you even imagine how awful that must have been for that one kid? They come down on Christmas Day, only to find out that their toy was absolutely broken by Mindy. I mean, if that doesn't ruin the holiday spirit, I don't know what will. So in my opinion, I think you're completely right. I think the fact that you want to take some kind of precaution to prevent not only Mindy from doing that again, but also the other kids from doing that as well, in my opinion, I think that's a really good idea and it's completely justified because Mindy did this literally to all of those kids. And who's to say she wouldn't try to do that again this year? Am I the jerk for
for telling my daughter's boyfriend to go home after he wouldn't stop telling me how to fix up my kitchen. Here's what happened. I first want to start off by saying that all names in this story are fake. I picked up my daughter's boyfriend Ron from his house on Friday night so that we could watch a Christmas movie together. My daughter Molly and I had already had dinner at a restaurant after Christmas shopping but he had not. So I offered to make him dinner. Ron wanted to prepare something on his own so I told him he could use our kitchen. Now he's done this before. He is responsible and uses our equipment with care. Also as a side note, Ron and Molly are both 17 years old. We get home and he walks into the kitchen which was a mess and that's my fault as I had not had time to clean it up after cooking dinner the night before. Ron says he can't work like this and proceeds to clean up the kitchen with my daughter's help. I left the kitchen to do something else and a few minutes later I walk into the kitchen to make some tea and I hear my daughter say the mess is due to my procrastination. So I explained that I had been up since 3 in the morning and I hadn't had time to clean the kitchen because I had things to take care of and I had taken her Christmas shopping after work. She then asked if I was done and so I went up to the living room to watch some TV. Minutes later, Ron goes outside with a small compost bucket for kitchen scraps to dump in the large bin provided by the city. He walks back in complaining about the junk stuck on the bottom, which did not fall out all the way. It's a mixture of coffee grounds and bacon fat, so it is hard to shake out. He tells me he's going to hose it off outside. As he's leaving, I remember the outdoor hose is off because it's winter, so I yell for him to come back as the hose won't work because it's turned off. Well, my daughter tells me not to yell, and I tell her to tell him the hose won't work because it's winter. Now, as a side note, this is the second time in a week that he's expressed disgust at our kitchen scraps bucket, so I'm getting bothered about it because I take it as a criticism whether he means it that way or not. Also, the fact of his parents' kitchen always being clean is something that he and my daughter have always made a point of mentioning a few times. Ron returns the bucket, and Molly washes it out in the sink. When she's done washing it, he comes to the living room, holding the bucket, and explaining that he's going to put parchment in the bottom to prevent the gunk from sticking to the bottom again. I then interrupt him, and I tell him to please not tell me about it because I'm just not interested. He continues, and I ask him again not to tell me because I don't want to know. He has a puzzled expression on his face and then just starts again. So I tell him to stop talking about it and if he cannot stop, he should just go home because I honestly don't want to hear about it. He stops and leaves the living room to join Molly in her room. Well, about 15 minutes later, Ron says goodnight and then leaves. Molly has asked me to apologize to Ron and I'm having a hard time convincing myself that I was in the wrong. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? Not only are you the jerk in this situation, but everybody's the jerk here. It really seems like everybody sucks in this story. Like, not only is your house a complete mess, but you also don't even take the initiative and say, hey, I'm going to clean it up for you real quick. But that also doesn't excuse the fact that Ron, a visitor in your home, is walking around cleaning your house, being incredibly passive aggressive. Like, that is no way for any guest to act in somebody else's house. And then to top it all off, when Ron's explaining to you how to keep the gunk off the bottom of your bag, you sit there and keep interrupting him and kept saying, oh, I don't want to hear about it. Oh my God, just leave if you're going to talk about it. Like, what are you talking about? This is your house. Like, this 17-year-old teenager is trying to help you out, which, by the way, that's a really weird dynamic in and of itself because you should be the one taking care of him, not the other way around. And even though he's trying to do a nice thing for you, you're being super rude and dismissive. So honestly, across the board, pretty much everybody, including Molly, was being very rude in this scenario. And I think the attitude of everybody in that house absolutely has to change. My boyfriend doesn't want to travel no matter what, and regardless of what kind of circumstances I bring up, he simply won't compromise, and it's honestly so annoying. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for three years. At the beginning of the relationship, we would take a lot of small trips and do a lot of fun things. Finances have been tough for him since then, and we have cut back on doing a lot of things. We now take maybe two small trips a year that include driving a few hours. This is fine and I understand. However, I still want to travel. Now, I asked him earlier this year if we could save money together to put towards a nice trip in 2024. He got very defensive and asked if the trips we take now are not good enough. I told him I enjoyed them, but I've never flown and I would love to go on a bigger trip. And honestly, this conversation always goes nowhere. He always tries to plan a trip for our anniversary in February. And this year, I suggested going out west but he said he didn't have the money to do so. Now, regarding our trip this coming February,
February, I did go through a long list of options, and he turned all of the out-of-state options down. I asked him if it would be okay if I went out west with my friends later this year instead, and he got upset and said he felt like I should be going with him, but he is too broke to afford the trip. He said he feels like he's in competition with my friends. Now here's the thing, I have even offered to pay for the trip entirely, or at least pay for a majority of it. I think this would put a strain on myself, but for the sake of being fair and trying to make him feel better, I did offer, but he refused the offer as well. Now, the trip out west is just an example that we've talked about. I mean, we've discussed many destinations, so it's not the trip itself he's turning down. These instances and conversations have all happened at different times as well. We don't live together and we both live at home. I'm saving up for a house, but I have money set aside so I can use it to travel. I understand and respect his situation, even though I'm not sure where his money is going. I try to put myself in his shoes feelings-wise, but I'm not sure it's right to hold your partner back from doing what they want, especially if traveling is not a priority to him like it is for me. Now, my friend is asking me to go on a cruise. I've never been on one and I would like to go, but I'm worried I will upset him if he can't afford to come along with me. Now, I do care about his feelings. I just don't know how to handle this. Should I go or should I not go? What should I do? It really seems like your boyfriend is being very unreasonable. Like, it seems like he shoots down any idea of going on a trip pretty much any time it comes up, even you just going out with your friends and having a good time, which in my opinion is really weird. Like, there's no reason for him to be upset about that, right? Like, it really doesn't make sense why he's trying to hold you back. And it's not like you have an offer to pay for his stuff. Like, you literally said to him, hey, I'll pay for your trip, or even just a majority of it. But even with that idea, he still says no. So honestly, in my opinion, if I was in your shoes, I would go on that trip, and I would just apologize to the boyfriend that yes, I am going to go, and I'm sorry if you can't go yourself. I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't love him, but it does mean that you don't want him holding you back from doing things that you like, especially if it's stuff that isn't going to harm your relationship. But what about you? Leave a comment down below. Would you go on this trip even though your boyfriend wouldn't want you to go, or would you stay behind just to save his feelings? Let us know down below. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.